Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the GC Index People Leader series. My guest today is Frank Dick, sports coach, motivational speaker, and unsurpassed record of helping a variety of athletes in a variety of sports to deliver their best. Welcome Frank. Good uh, to nice have to meet you, John. Yep. With us. Um, you've completed the GC Index and um, you have a strong game changer profile. Uh, mapping that onto your world, what's, what's the essence of a game changer coach? Well, I think, I think probably it all starts with accepting that there's always something you can do differently. Um, whatever you see, the, there has to be another way of doing that. Um, that's not to dismiss the things that do work in life, um, but there are always other ways to work. And if, if you're going to develop other people, um, whether there are other coaches or whether there are other leaders, whether there are other athletes, um, what sparks them, what, what works for them is very individual. I, th I think the, the notion of, of uh, life being athlete-centred, if you like, or, or the, the, the coachee-centred, uh, coach-led and performance-related uh, sciences supported, uh, that's the world you've actually got to really live in if you you, you've got to have this, this feeling that the person in front of you has got totally unique needs. And if you've not got a flexible mind that can find different ways of getting through to this person to feed on their strengths to make them grow, uh, then you shouldn't be in coaching. There, there's a value set, some beliefs that underpin this approach of yours. Can you distill them? Well, we could have a look at b beliefs, but the, 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 the key behaviours, I think, are, are, are a very simple, a very silly little acronym, um, ODD, own, decide and do. What you're trying to develop people to, to do is to take ownership and to turn moments into opportunities. Um, you, you've, they've then got to be able to take considered risks in their decision making to turn the opportunity to advantage. Um, and then they've just got to do it effectively and excellently and deliver on that. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a silly little acronym, but that's, that's all you're trying to do. You make it sound very simple. Um, our audience is going to be interested in this because many of them will be coaches. Um, when do coaches get it wrong then? Because I guess you must have seen this in the world of sports coaching too. Well, I think that everything starts with and ends with people. I mean, people talk about development in life, and development departments and so on, but the fact is the only thing you can develop is people because the people do the other, the other bits after that. And so everything starts with knowing your people. Do you really know them? Yes. Um, and you seem to be a great observer of people and human nature and behaviour. Is that part of what you bring? Oh, I think everything uh, from a coach's point of view, is to know your people and you're not going to know your people if you can't observe things. When, by observation, I mean, when you look at things, are you really seeing them? You yes. know, when you're listening, are you really hearing things? Yes. Um, and o over time, uh, can you develop the ability to have a gut feeling about things and to trust that? Yeah. See, because wrapped up in that is, is, is your learning process. Uh, there are some things in life you can be taught. There are other things in life you can only learn. You can be taught the science of what you do, the tools of your trade. You'll get it online, you'll get it in a lecture and so on. You read it in a book. But you can only learn the art of what you do in life, whether, whether, whether it's in coaching or whatever your career is. Uh, and, and that is learned, that learning is through experience. I, I, I love that distinction. And um, it, 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 again, it sounds simple. In terms of learning, because my understanding of you is this is where your game changer creativity does come to the fore. Give us a flavour of, of learning in a creative way. 
in, in any setting? Well, when I say learning through experience, uh, you've got to remember the words of Vernon Law. And he said, um, experience is the cruelest of all teachers because she gives you the test first and the lesson second. Oh. And I think the, the, the one thing you've got to remember is once you move into that territory of learning, um, it's, you're, you're usually coaching after the event. You, 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 you let the person have the experience, then you come in afterwards and ask the questions. Could it have been done better? Could it have been done differently? Uh, are, are, are there different things we could have done in, in, in there? I suppose that could be summarised in... Uh, um, a particular example that was, uh, we all know this fantastic athlete, uh, Jessica Ennis. Jess goes to Daegu the year before the Olympic Games. Um, uh, it's a tough old competition. Javelin doesn't go quite right, um, and she finishes second. And Tony Minicello is her coach, uh, at, and I have to say, an outstanding coach, one of the one of the best in the world. And Tony. Um, used to, because he, he never stopped wanting to learn himself, uh, phoned me up, let's have a meeting in London, because we, all, we did this from time to time just to swap notes on uh, what goes right and what doesn't go right in coaching. And he said, um, uh, what do you think? I said, well, how am I going to argue about uh, four lifetime bests? Can you imagine that? Four lifetime bests out of seven events in two days. Absolutely magic. That's a f fantastic job. He said, are you going to say but? I said, yeah, just a small one. I said, you know when she was having problems with the javelin, uh, what did she do? So she came across the side to see me and Mick Hill. Uh, Mick Hill, one of, the, one of our country's top ever javelin throwers. And I said, and what, and what did you do? Uh, well, we give her advice. I said, well, that's what you did wrong. So are you saying we give her the wrong advice? I said, no, no. So at that point, just giving her advice is wrong because there are moments in your life when you've given people all the tools that they need, they've got all the competences there, what they're needing is the experience to make the decision under pressure. And if you j jump over the fence, because very well meaning, you don't want them to, to get it wrong, if you jump over the fence, you've stopped them making decisions and they don't, they don't learn through yes. the process. Yes. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a powerful story, isn't it? And I also think it highlights the the anxieties coaches often have that they feel the need to perform, uh, and in doing so, it gets in the way of the, the person they're trying to, to help. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's it's no different with parents. Uh, yeah. I must tell you this story. It's kind of against myself, but my next door neighbour was uh, going taking his daughter up to. Um, to university in Glasgow. We were living in uh, South London um, and I came home in the evening and my wife Linda said to me, you, you, you'll never guess what, what happened with, with, when they took Zoe up to, to uh, Glasgow. I said, no, I said, well, uh, Linda next door, because my wife's Linda, the, the, the lady next door was also Linda, she said that, um, that Barry cried all the way home in the car. I said, well, what a big soft toy. I mean, I thought he was tougher than that. Well, two years later, I'm standing in a car park uh, in St Andrews saying goodbye to my elder daughter, Erin, um, uh, with my younger daughter, Cara, and Linda, my wife. And it must have been a grain of sand that blew off the mm. beach and lodged itself into my eyes. Oh. And, uh, and I said, um, you say goodbye, I'll be in the car. And I was really quite distressed. And my first thought about why I was distressed was, I've not done enough for Erin to be okay to take ownership and move off, move off and, and take, take the look after her life. And then it dawned on me. It was me that wasn't prepared to let go. This was hurting me more than anything else. And I think what we have to remember in life, whether we're parents, bosses, leaders, coaches, is the whole point is to let them go. And Part of that is for the people that we develop to take ownership out there, and take ownership of their own lives and move on. There's a nice picture I'll give you, give you in this. It's from a poem by, called The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. Yes, not well. And when he's talking about parents and children, mm -hmm. to paraphrase that part, it says, the parent is to the bow as the child is to the arrow. Yeah. And I think as coaches, leaders, parents, you've got to remember, give them power, Give them direction, but let them go. 
you at your most creative what, what, what do you look back on long career and think yes I was I was on good form at that point in time what would what would it be I, I really couldn't answer that question John um, there have been moments when you suddenly realize that you've done you you've been working on process because I'm really quite clear on that get the processes right and the outcomes take care of themselves um, or if you like when it comes to sporting performance you, you, you're not in total control of results, but you are in total control of a performance. Yeah. You get your performance right and the result will look after itself. Mm -hmm. And that's what you focus on. Yes. And I think there'll be moments when suddenly something's happened and it seems like a surprise. Yeah, that's interesting. But it suddenly dawns on you afterwards, well, that's <clears throat> what we're supposed to be doing here. Yes, yes. So it's that openness to seeing what's going on in the moment that can potentially allow you to be creative. Mm -hmm. But pre predicting it ahead of time is a... It's contradiction, isn't it? No, no. You get well. We we can't. We can aim for excellence. Um, see, the big mistake I think a lot of people make is that to to look at what excellence is today and say, if I'm going to be a winner in life, I just have to be better than that. But the contest, as you say, is always in the future. Yes. What we must be able to do is have a picture of what excellence will look like and work out how do we create a process yeah. to get to that yes. point. So the creativity supports that yeah. process. And, and, and when you're designing the process, John, you don't plan, plan forwards. Coaches don't plan forwards. You plan backwards. Mm -hmm. If this is where you have to be on the 2nd of November, whenever in the future, where do you have to be six weeks before that and yes. six weeks before yes. that? And yes. you plan yourself back. That does not mean that your plan is carved in stone at that point because you'll constantly be having to think differently to find other ways of being creative to keep pulling back onto line and keep going. Um, but, but you have to know where you're going, otherwise how do you plan your journey? Our audience wouldn't forgive me if I didn't ask about the World Cup in Japan yeah. last month. Um, tremendous experience for all involved, I should imagine. Um, so Eddie Jones, he gets you involved in 2016, he wants you there, he needs you there, what does he look to you for? Now don't be modest. Well, I, th I, th I think <coughs> we know each other very well, we've known each other for a long time. Eddie knows I've got a fair bit of experience in coaching um, and that he'll have observations. Um, on, on, on situations in front of me that may be slightly different than observations that other people would have. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think Eddie would value me, value me more than any uh, any of the other fantastic inputs he has, um, but he does value me, um, and I, I really appreciate that. And I suppose that excites me to come up with other ideas. Yes, because you can you will see the world in slightly different ways that have the potential. Mm. Yeah, of bringing creative and, and and what you should understand is that Ed, Eddie's mindset is like that anyway. He he is absolutely relentlessly in pursuit of something new, something different, a different way to th see things, and has th has this having received input for the, whether it's from me or other people, he then has this inordinate capacity to to distill that into maybe three key points. Yes. Then you work on that, yeah. because yes. we're, we're John in the world, certainly the world we're in now, we're surrounded by a tsunami of intelligence yeah. coming at us, and the, the the most important single skill we, ha we we must have is to simplify that, draw it into tight points that you can deal with. Yes, so I can see how you two would complement each other very well with that. Frank, thanks very much for your time today. Much appreciated. All the very best for your next project, wherever it may be.